houses were being lavishly built and lavishly decorated. And El Greco ran a highly successful local practice, supplying all kinds of religious paintings to satisfy this demand. These included a disrobing of Christ for the high altar of the cathedral. It's still there. A holy family for the newly built hospital Tavera, using his wife, so it's thought, as the model for the Virgin Mary. And the most famous of all El Greco's pictures in Toledo churches, the burial of the Count of Orgath, which he painted for his own parish church, Santo Tome. I can't help feeling that to some extent at least, El Greco was in fact paying tribute here to his own work, since so many of the buildings included in the picture had been embellished by him. Nor do I believe it a coincidence that El Greco chose the view of Toledo which gives fullest prominence to the Renaissance palace he himself lived in. Sometimes it was said hiring musicians to play for him while he dined. Neither is it a coincidence, I imagine, that he brought forwards from more than 20 miles distance the church tower of the neighboring town of Ilyethkas. Five of El Greco's paintings still hang in the accompanying Hospital of Charity here. And it was the church authorities of Ilyethkas who at this very moment were involving the artist in an acrimonious lawsuit over payment for his work. I like to think it was not for nothing that El Greco set Ilyethkas right in the track of God's thunder. El Greco intended it, I'm sure, to be read as God's thunder and intended us to see this as a religious painting. And this becomes clearer if we look at it in relation to a whole group of pictures in which El Greco included the city of Toledo. At first sight, the view and plan of Toledo looks like a fairly straightforward topographical account. Apart from the allegorical figure on the left representing the River Tagus, and a further group of figures, including the Virgin Mary, descending from the clouds. But already we have departed from strict geographical fact. And what about this foreground building, seated on a cloud? It's actually the Hospital Tavera, for which the artist had been commissioned to paint the Holy Family and several other altarpieces. And he has set it on a cloud so that he might be free to turn it to face this way. The painting is half map and half vision. In the Christ on the cross, Toledo rises in the background of the crucifixion under a sky that is by now almost totally black. The only light is divine light. It shines weakly on the Cathedral of Toledo and on El Greco's palace. But it shines fully on the figure of Christ and on the torn fragments of cloud which swirl in the general blackness. In all these paintings, it's the same thing. Blackness is the human condition on earth. We live in the shadow of our sins. Overhead, God's thunder rolls. Even Toledo, that splendid city, is not so splendid after all. The light that falls on it is only a pale reflection of the celestial light above. Toledo is doomed, like Troy, like man. What El Greco has achieved here is something rather rare in art, which is a tragic vision of landscape. So that in the end, it's not so much a view of Toledo as a view of life, and a pretty black one at that, which makes it actually a rather depressing picture, in that man is so puny, so insignificant. There's no warmth of love for man or for man's work. But at the same time, like King Lear, it has an unforgettable, tragic grandeur. It strikes you with all the tremendous force of this storm which is about to strike the city of Toledo. It's terrible, but it's also thrilling. It's superb. It sets the nerves tingling. If this is God's wrath, we can only stand in awe.
That is what El Greco's picture says to me.